Hello, my name's Matthew Andrews. I'm a holographer. Holography was invented by a man called Dennis Gabor over 40 years ago. But still, whenever I show holograms to people, they always ask the same questions. What is a hologram and how do you make one? The scientific answer is that a hologram is the record of the interaction of two wavefronts of light. Now that sounds very complicated, but really it's very simple. A hologram is just a special kind of lens, and lenses bend light, like this. And so a hologram, like this lens, is just a tool we use to manipulate light. So, how do you make a hologram? Well, in this film, I'm going to show you how to make a hologram of this ball. This is a holographic plate. It's a piece of glass with a light-sensitive emulsion coated on one side of it, and it's what becomes the hologram when we expose it to laser light. But we need something to hold it in place while we do that. A plate holder. Most holograms are made like this. You put the object on the table and the plate holder next to it. A ground glass screen helps us see the light that will fall on the plate. All holograms are made with laser light. We use mirrors to direct the beam to the plate holder. You can see that the beam is still just a dot. To make it cover the whole plate area, we spread the beam with a simple lens. We now have half a camera, or in other words, one path of light from the laser to the plate, and we call this the reference beam. What we don't have is any light on the object, or ball, and we call this the object beam. We make the object beam with a mirror called a beam splitter. A normal mirror reflects all the light that falls on it, but a beam splitter is only partially mirrored, so it lets some light pass through it and reflects the rest. Because it's graduated, you can make as much light go down either beam path as you want. This is important because to get an efficient hologram, the reference beam must always be a precise amount brighter than the object beam. Both beam paths are in place and the camera is built, but it still needs to be fine-tuned. Using a piece of string, we measure the two beam paths. They must be exactly the same length. This keeps them in step with each other. If they were out of step with each other, you'd get no hologram at all. We need to put a shutter in the path of the beam in order to control the exposure time. Turning on a green safe light allows us to remove the ground glass screen and load the light sensitive holographic plate, which will become the hologram. The slightest vibration or movement of the instruments would ruin the hologram. Even wind can move a beam, so it's best to leave the room, let everything settle down and operate the shutter from outside. I like to have a cup of tea at this point. I said earlier that a hologram was the recorded interaction of two beams of light. Well, this is one beam of light, and it goes through my eye, and my brain understands it as a flat picture. And if we all only had one eye, we would all only see flat pictures like photographs. But this is two beams of light going through two eyes, and to understand the two flat pictures, the brain has to join together or interact the images to create a single three-dimensional image. Look at it this way. If I put a plate in my head and go click, I would get a photograph. And now if I have a plate in my head and go click, I would have a hologram. So how does a flat hologram like this give us a three-dimensional image? Well, as I said earlier, a hologram is just a special type of lens. And lenses, like this one, bring light to a focal point, like this. And this is a three-dimensional shape of light. And holograms bend light not into a focal point, but into a focal shape, the same shape as the object that was recorded. Let's record the ball now. I'll give it a 15-second exposure.
I'll take the plate out and develop it in the same way as a photograph is developed. Seen in white light, the hologram produces a rainbow smear. But illuminated by the laser, the image looks sharp. A perfect three-dimensional record of the ball. If I turn the plate round, the ball comes out the front of the plate. Only it's back to front and inside out. Taking the eye of the camera through the hologram shows clearly how it's like a lens. And that's how you make a hologram.